Hello everybody, my name is Tom Kraus from Byte the Bytes and this time I'm going to show you an in-depth introduction to Word Creator 2. We're going to all steps by creating a terrain, using the input terrain, using the terrain mask and the different terrain filters, uh, texturing the terrain, placing some nice objects and I will show you also some nice tricks that you can do with Word Creator. So first, the plugin that you see here is the professional version. Um, it's the current version which is also available in the asset store and there's just a little difference because uh, this is a new revision which is available on our FTP but only for professional customers and the professional version is is uh, slightly different from the standard version I'm just going to show you uh, what the difference actually really is if you visit our website here just scroll a little bit down you can also get the latest documentation here and there you can see what the difference between those two versions are you see the ultra-fast GPU generation, which is not avail uh, available in the standard version. You have a 8K map resolution in the professional version. This is actually temporary because um, uh, we are going to implement uh, our, 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 our tiling system, which will be very, very powerful. I will show you this also in a, in a separate video. So um, then we have the terrain masks which uh, are not available also in the standard version. Actually, this is a really nice feature because this allows you to create different biomes on a single terrain map. Then you have also the everyday access to the latest revisions through our FTP server. And you have 100 textures from gametextures.com included, which is really, really awesome. And also there's one more package included, like the full realistic tree package uh, from a nature manufacturer. Then also check the upcoming features. There's slightly a difference. First thing is that you have the full tiling support included in the professional version, and you will have limited support only uh, for tiling in the standard version. And now this one here, um, some people under uh, underestimated. This is a very powerful thing. This is absolutely unique among and compared to other terrain procedural terrain generators, the sedimentation of your of of your terrain. Um, older word creator one customers uh, might or might already know what this means because it was also not, not available in uh, gear control before so let's get back to uh, what creator um, by creating just a simple new terrain here and now let's uh, step through each uh, setting here first I want to show you what it really means if you're using the GPU generation so um, now I'm first checking the random seed because I want to create my terrain every time I hit the generate button. I want to create a new different terrain. And you can see now it takes a little amount of time, but it's quite fast enough because is it is it already multi-threaded on the, C on the CPU. But you can see that uh, if I uh, um, increase the resolution size of my terrain, it takes longer and longer for the entire generation. And now let's uh, switch on the GPU usage. So what is going to happen? You can see that there's one new button down here, preview GPU, and the generate button has changed the label by uh, now labeling GPU and CPU. So what does it actually mean? I will explain it uh, very shortly. Just a second, I will just show you how fast it is now. You can see it's a lot faster than before. Uncheck, compare. But it's not the fastest possible uh, creation type. Um, this can be done with the preview button, and I will uh, quickly explain what the difference exactly is, uh, what, what the technical difference between those two uh, is. So, check this resolution now. I have it to 2K map, and now I hit the preview button, and you can see it's instant. It's really absolutely fast, it's real time, regardless of what kind of resolution I'm going to use here. 4K maps, absolutely fast. So, now what is the difference between those two actually? Um, the difference is that um, the terrain itself, so the terrain data, the height map data that is being calculated procedurally is generated on the GPU. And this, G uh, and this uh, data that has been generated entirely only on the GPU must be transferred back to the CPU. And from the CPU then it has to be fed into the Unity ter uh, terrain object. You can see here, if I just uh, change the shape mode, um, you can see that the Unity Terrain object uh, has a different uh, LOD levels for different chunks and actually this data has to be created. And this is done uh, if I import my uh, or if I set my height values for this terrain. 
Now, what is going actually on if, uh, if, if I'm using the preview button? There is a slightly difference. If I use now preview, um, you can see there's one more game object added here. It's called work creator terrain GPU. And my original work creator terrain is just set to inactive so you can't see it. And this work creator terrain GPU, you can see it here. This is uh, just a plane which is uh, using a tessellation shader. And the advantage in this case is that we that we directly can use the generated data as a texture and apply it uh, into this um, terrain uh, tessellation shader, which is mapped and just displays the terrain directly. So this is ultra fast. Th this is just the reason why. So next is um, some people ask me if this is a Unity Terrain object because it is labeled as World Creator. As you can see here, it is a Unity Terrain object, so you can just start and modify this terrain uh, with with the with the standard Unity Terrain tools. Um, so it's 100% Unity Terrain. It's not a specific mesh or whatever. Uh, you can do with it. Uh, uh, you can do the same uh, things with it as you would have done. Uh, with a with a terrain object, you would have created like this, like like like, like selecting the terrain here. Um, so the next one I'm going to show you now is uh, I, w I will leave the GPU on here for the first time now. Um, is the fixed height ratio? If this one is checked and you change the mesh size, for example here, and hit generate button, you can see the mesh is adapted. It's getting a bit it's getting larger. But you also uh, saw that the that the height values are being adapted depending on the width. If you don't want that, like saying I'm going back to the one thousand to the one thousand maps here, and I'm going to uncheck it, and I add two thousand, you can see the height is not being adapted. So the next thing is the pixel error here. Usually, uh, you can see that the that the that the minimum value for a simple Unity train object is uh, is uh, is only one. Uh, well, it's possible to, to reduce the pixel error by code, uh, set it down to z uh, point, uh, uh, 0 0.1. But uh, be careful with this because um, it's not recommended to use this in a, in, a, in, a, in a release. But you can use it just to see the, the nice details while designing your terrain data. Well, the, all the other settings like the cast shadows, base map distance and so on um, are exactly um, the same as you can set up here in the Unity Terrain object. Uh, there's one more thing about the base map distance. This is usually also limited to uh, 2K, but uh, sometimes it's quite important to see a little bit more, even uh, uh, especially if you're going to create multiple terrains right here. And for the tiling system, this will be increased a little bit more, um, so we won't cut the textures. I will. So we'll just leave it now at a 2K. That's okay for us. So the next is the material here. These are the standard built-in uh, Unity uh, materials, terrain materials. We have this gradient that you have seen in a previous video before. Um, this could be used to uh, just apply a gradient texture and visualize, for example, the height values or just to play around and see what happens if you drop in some different other textures, you get different results. Sometimes pretty nice to to see them. So the next is the relief terrain pack. Uh, we will come to this later when we are about texturing the terrain. This will be uh, shown in just another video. I will leave it uh, in the standard right now. So now let's come to a very important thing. Um, it's called the input terrain. Well, the input terrain is used to uh, enable you to enhance an existing uh, unit terrain object or uh, an existing uh, height map object. Um, just to show you how, how this really works, I'm going to create a simple sample now. We're starting out with a, with a simple texture. So the idea is we have downloaded some height maps from the internet. This could be some, some GIS data, some DEM values, whatever. And now we want to modify them a little bit and just to um, advance them a little bit. So let's say we have this uh, quite um, well-known budget sound uh, data here. Uh, we're going to drag and drop into here. And now we will set the operation to average and just hit the generate button. And you can see that the uh, height map values um, uh, are used by World Creator to create the terrain. So actually, what, where is now the enhancement? Well, the enhancement can be now done by applying uh, multiple filters and also applying uh, several uh, terrain masks. So first, before we do that, I'm going to explain a few things here. 
like the strength value. Um, you, if I reduce this to zero, hit the generate button, you can see that uh, the previous uh, generated terrain with the with the basic noise filter here uh, is uh, is the major terrain this, that that comes out here now. And if I just uh, increase the strength of the input terrain data, you can see that it blends to the more and more to the input terrain. So this is one option you could do. You could use a basic noise, apply the basic noise, and mix both maps together. Um, the level strength um, further can be used to, yeah, to fine tune a little bit the terrain. You get some different things out of it depending on what you have done before. So these are actually this is just a fine tune. You can better mix uh, the input terrain uh, in combination with the filters that you have added down here. I will leave this at the original values now. The next you could do is also change the operation type, as you can see here. Um, now what happens here is that there's an addition between uh, the imported ma uh, map and uh, the values that the basic filter currently generates. If you want to have the original one, just take uh, the average and you get uh, uh, a very good mix between, uh, between both. So now let's see what we can do with enhancement. The first thing that you can do with, it, with enhancement is the simply to um, increase the resolution size. This is the very first thing now. Um, you can see I get a lot more granular uh, terrain right here. You can now also reduce a, a little bit of the graininess by reducing the general strength of the basic filter. Get less grain. And now we could do also some, some important thing. I will switch back to 1K to make it a little bit faster now. We can add uh, additional terrain filters. Like let's say you want to have some, some sort of, uh, of a canyon style of this one here. Then you would add a terrain filter like this canyon. You would increase a little bit the canyon stuff here. Hit the generate button, and now you see it looks it looks a little bit more like a canyon thing. Now you could just change the operation to addition, and you will see a lot better version of it. Now you could keep this game on by applying, let's say, a rich filter like this, and you will see the rich version of it. Or maybe you just want to add some some kind of a mine, Minecraft filter and we'll see a Minecraft version of it. You of course no, are not uh, limited to only two filters so you could actually just combine them and let's say um, we're adding a canyon filter let's see how it looks like. Yeah we will have to increase a little bit the strength here and now let's see how it would look like if we in addition add a terrestrial filter. Now we get a little bit more terrestrial versions of it could reduce also like here some values and you get a different map. So many possibilities and it also depends on the order of these values you get a different terrain out of it so you have really unlimited possibilities it's almost impossible to explain every possible combination because it's unlimited. So this is just the one thing now now we'll let's have a closer look to the uh, to the masks here I will reset to the original values now um, so what 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 are these masks for? Let's say you want to have uh, this part of the terrain, so the so the right part of the terrain to be rich and the left part of the terrain to be more like a canyon or whatever uh, or whatever style. So how do you uh, achieve this? Really easy. Just add a terrain mask here. Select on your textures or just create a texture in Photoshop. And it yeah it must be a grayscale texture like these ones here. Add a mask which describes the area mapped entirely on the terrain and add a simple filter that should be used for this reasons like the rich one and if I generate you will see I have a more rich versions like uh, on, on the areas that the mask uh, covers. Now let's say add just another mask because we want to have on the right side some canyon style so just add another mask. I'm going to use the same mask now but I'm going to invert it so the black parts become white and here I'm going to add the the canyon thing here and increase a little bit the canyon strength so we can see the canyon things. So now this is when we call about enhancement or modification of an existing terrain. You can you you can do this with a with a texture. And uh, of course you are not limited only to texture, you can uh, also do this with an existing unity terrain. I'm going to show you this quickly. Um, it generate and uh, let's say 
we'll delete this texture, just switch back to the Unity Train object. So this is now our basic noise. Uh, let's move me out a little bit so you can watch it better. I'm going to create a simple Unity Terrain. Move it to this way here. Now I'm going to paint just some stuff on it. Sorry, I'm not an artist. I just want to show you all the idea behind that. You have something in here. And now you want this terrain to be enhanced by World Creator. So you just drag and drop this terrain into World Creator. Hit the generate button and you can see that you have the basic shape of this terrain. Now you could also change back to the average here and you will exactly see the original shape of, uh, uh, of this. And because you want to really modify and uh, make it a little bit looking nicer, you could start with adding also here like uh, like this canyon filter. All those nice uh, terrain filters of World Creator. Uh, this was too much. To enhance a little bit and making it look the style as you want. And now every time you're changing some stuff here, switch back and you just generate you can see it's it's uh, it's uh, taken from the from the uh, from, from this original terrain now because this terrain doesn't look really cool i'm going to do something different now i'm going to create a new world creator terrain this is just another option that you that you actually have and i'm going to use this terrain now uh, uh, to 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 uh, to modify and to use as an input terrain very simple I use this one as an input terrain, hit the generate button and you get the general shape of the original world creator terrain. Now if you start shaping this one like you want to have some, I don't know, some, some roads in here. Sorry again, I'm not an artist. Um, just to give you the idea what is behind that. Oh, my road is really, it's not really a good road. <laughs> and now if you generate, you can see the road has been applied in this terrain. But also see that um, this road is not like uh, totally flattened, but it ha has some little noise on it. Now, what else you could do is uh, also a nice trick. You could use your creator directly to import some kind of really nice maps. Like uh, you have, let's say you have some raw files applied here, like this erosion one. Just use this, import the terrain. So it looks like increasing the... Uh, Pixel or decreasing the pixel, you can see it better. So actually, this is this is quite interesting because this is a terrain that has been generated by our prototype um, of Work Creator, which we are using um, to experiment with the with the uh, with the filters that we are going to create. Here you can see a very first uh, introduction of the of the erosion filters. Actually, we have several erosion filters uh, which erode by by water or by sand or by snow and whatever really many many options it will be soon available for the professional and the standard versions for both with uh, another update so let's say this is now your input terrain again so just import it by world creator could use this of course and generate our own terrain out of it now don't take it because it's not really comparable now you can see because this this terrain has the uh, Kenya filter applied remove it see now a uh, just as a, a different version of this one, and this because of the uh, of the operation, you could change to average. It will have the same. If you are going to ch uh, to 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 add terrain filters, just make sure that you check back to addition and apply your whatever terrains you have here, like the terrace maybe also quite nice to see, and you have the terrace version of it. So of course. Um, the same operation that I've shown bef previously with the with the with the with the textures uh, input terrain type can be applied here also, just like the 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 mask stuff and the filter stuff. Okay, so this was now. I uh, hope it was easy to follow. It uh, and hope you just got the idea what is all behind that. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to texturize this terrain. Um, and also how to play some objects and play around with it. Okay, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.